Tremendous difficult season for us, not only for me, but for the team. And like the other three victories, you know, this one is special because uh, it's in a place where we have great memories of championship victories, race victories, a huge number of fans cheering up for us, lots of Brazilian flags around. And right at the end of a championship, at the end of the season, when still there is an open situation for a second place, and the fact also that I'm leaving the team at the end of the year, it's just great opportunity that we collect today with the changeable conditions, very difficult to maintain your pace and stay on the circuit. And this victory is, is really the best I could offer to the team who gave me three world championships. Well, you mentioned your team, McLaren Ford. This is today their 103rd victory, which equals Ferrari's record. And I'm sure you must feel very proud to be part of that. Yeah, I think uh, it's a great record that uh, the team has achieved. And I am very happy that I have contributed a little bit for that. At the same time that Mika has done extremely well. And for the team to be one and third, first and third here, it's a tremendous result. And I, I think it's a, a very good start for him. <laughs> and uh, a very good way to finish for me. <laughs> In the race between laps 34 and 38, you lost a considerable time advantage over Alain. The track appeared to be drying rapidly. Were you not worried that you were you should be changing tyres earlier than you in actual fact did? Well, yes, normally I should, but I, I didn't have to. And I didn't want to change tyres too early and take a risk and maybe with the slicks in very difficult conditions risk to go off. So with the lead that I had, I only had to pace myself and wait for a safe moment for change tires. I had uh, lots of scary moments in the race with back markers, just very unprofessional. I mean, if you lead in the race, the guy makes life so difficult for you to overtake two, three, five laps. And then when you overtake and they get involved ahead of you, other guys make a mistake and you slow down, the guys come behind you, hitting you, going like banging wheels with you and I'm leading the race, I'm lapping the guy. So very unprofessional and uh, I think a measure should be taken against the drivers who did that. And uh, secondly, uh, I had three guys fighting in front of me, had nowhere to go, then Patrese spun in front of me, I had to go off the circuit and she came to avoid him. Again, a result of the people being not professional. And later on, uh, Ligier car lost a wheel on the straight and dropped a big piece of metal. And he was ahead of me, so I couldn't see very well. When I suddenly realized I hit that big piece of metal in, the, in the, my left front suspension. And there was some damage there. I don't know exactly how much, but there was some damage. And lots of other moments, you know, just people spinning all over the place, dropping oil. Very difficult race, but uh, I think um, exactly being that difficult it gave us the opportunity to create a little bit of and we use a little bit of uh, instinct and get the victory. Well, I think every driver had a tell to tail today, but Alain, the Japanese Grand Prix has always been elusive for you. It remains so, and with your retirement, you don't look like you're going to win this one again. I'm sure you must have hoped for a victory today. <coughs> yes, for sure. I mean, every time I, I start a race, uh, I hope to win it, but uh, I knew it would be very difficult, and. Uh, it was it was like this difficult because the competition was uh, higher than it, it was at the beginning of the season. We saw in qualifying that uh, a lot of cars very close together, and difficult also because of the condition. And um, I mean, nothing to say. You know, in this kind of race, uh, as Edwin said, there's a lot of things happening, and uh, I can't complain very much. Uh, I did a good start, but too much wheel speed, and Edwin started the, uh, first. And the only way I could uh, win the race without the rain was um, to stop only once if he was stopping twice. And uh, so we don't know the, we don't know if it could be good or not because the rain came and we all sorts of problems. I went off, I uh, was quite lucky to go back on the track, went off on the oil and uh, quite pleased with the second place. Mika, mm -hmm. your first visit to the podium in your career, yeah, second yeah, race yeah. in McLaren this year, you must be on a high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. It feels really nice, you know. Uh, but it's only a few minutes now from the race, and the things going, a lot of things going in your mind.
What, what point? Still, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> what happened in the race. And uh, at the moment, it feels good. Actually, it was quite a quiet race for you, was it not? There was one point where you were very close to Alain in the wet. I have to admit, uh, I was following a lot about the pit board, about my lap times and the distance for the person who was front of me and and same who was behind me. And I wasn't I wasn't pushing at all because I was this is basically the second crowd the second Grand Prix for me this year. And uh, for me it was when I see the position three it was enough for me in this point and it was a point to push too hard and take a risk well, looking ahead if we may two weeks the australian grand prix the final round of the world championship there's still a lot at stake Ayrton, you can still take second place in the championship alan i'm sure you'd like to go out with a race victory and mika with the improvement in mclaren's form i'm sure you'd like to do the same Ayrton, what are the chances we'll wait and see <laughs> I'm um, expecting to have some holidays next week <laughs> and then long holidays after Australia but if I can finish with a win I would be very very happy here. Mika? Yeah. I think I have to say the same what Arton said. <laughs>